Hey, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'm going to show you how to use Hangfire in your ASP.NET Core web applications. Hangfire is an easy way to add a library to handle um, background processing jobs. Um, it works in full framework in .NET Core. I'm going to show you how to use it in ASP.NET Core. All right, so I'm just in Visual Studio Code, and I have a blank uh, ASP.NET Core MVC slash Web API project here. Um, so this was just built using .NET New Web API. And the first thing I need to do is add a couple packages for Hangfire, some package references in our CS Proj. Um, the first one is there's a package called Hangfire.ASP.NET Core. That's essentially everything you need for the most part. Um, which will reference hangfire.core and some other packages. Um, and then the second piece of the puzzle, which is going to be dependent on your setup and how you want to store, there's a, you basically need to store the hangfire job somewhere. Um, I'm going to be using the SQL server package. There are different packages out there. Just check NuGet. You can find ones for, uh, I believe, MySQL, other data storages. Hangfire has a paid um, a provider, data provider for uh, Redis, which I recommend checking out because it's incredibly fast. Um, so like I said, I'm going to use the SQL Server uh, package and as well as the ASP.NET Core package. So we're just going to add those in here. All right, so like I said, hangfire.ASP.NET uh, ASP Core um, and then current version is 1.6.17 and then same thing, I'm just going to be using the SQL Server uh, package as well. So once we have our packages and that's restored, we're going to go over to our startup and configure everything. All right, so I jumped over to our startup file. And the really just two things we need to do is we need to configure uh, in our configure services. We need to add Hangfire there and tell it what storage we're using. And like since we're using this SQL server uh, package, we'll have an extension method there I'll show you. And then finally, we'll in our configure method, um, basically use the Hangfire server and as well as we're going to use the dashboard since we're in um, an ASP.NET app. So in our configure services there's a couple lines you're going to need to add. So this add Hangfire is available now and what you need to do with the global configuration that's here is define what type of storage you're using. Like I said if you're using Redis this is going to be a different extension method but for my demo here, I have SQL server, and then I'm just using local DB. When Hangfire starts up, it will automatically create uh, the relevant tables um, that it's needed. So there's really nothing more that you need to do for Hangfire. It's pretty much self-configurable or configuring. Um, and then, like I said, in our configure, there's a couple things that we're going to do. We're basically going to specify that we're going to use the Hangfire server. Really what this is, is that this instance of this ASP.NET Core app is actually going to perform the background jobs. Um, you could have a separate console application that's performing, um, performing the, the background jobs. You can distribute this out over many different processes, over different VMs or servers. And that's kind of the beauty of Hangfire. And then as well, we're going to use the Hangfire dashboard. So this is like a web UI that can show you all your the jobs that are being executed or scheduled, and we'll take a take a look at what that looks like. So that's as simple as it is. Really, kind of three steps for adding Hangfire to our configure services, and then specifying that we want to use the server and the dashboard. So we're going to run this, and I'll show you what the dashboard looks like. All right, so build and run this. And then we'll jump over to our browser and I'll show you the dashboard. All right. So by default, because um, we didn't configure it, but um, the path to the Hangfire dashboard will just be slash Hangfire. So once you go here, this is the dashboard. There's some configurable options like um, how for authentication purposes that you might want to add different ways to uh, restrict who can get here. Um, but basically, you can list all the jobs that have been queued, scheduled, that are in the state of processing, succeeded, etc. 
there's any jobs that failed, there's a default retry um, system that's built in. Uh, reoccurring jobs, if you can, if you want, that are kind of based on cron expressions. And then as well as just servers, these are the servers that are connected that are actually running the background jobs. So technically it's just this one right here as I ran it a minute ago. So this server will show up here, but will be disconnected. But this is our server that we're actually running right now. So we can see the, the dashboard. So what I'm going to do now is actually just set up um, a background job that's going to get executed once we go to one of our API endpoints. All right, so I jumped back to VS Code. So we have this values controller, which is a part of the uh, .NET new template. And just to just want to show how this actually runs and how you run code in the background. Um, and hopefully it can kind of open your mind there to how you could actually use this and run separate um, background jobs. I'm just going to simply create just in queue a background job that's just going to output to the console. Um, so. And when I do so, I'm going to print out what the thread is that we're actually running from. So I just have this running console uh, or running background method. And really all I care about is just outputting the thread. Um, so let's actually add some we'll system about threading here. And we're just going to print out what the background thread is or the name of the thread is that we're running in. So this is our method that we're going to run in the background. And to get Hangfire to actually run it, um, I'm going to, when we call the get endpoint, um, and we just hit API slash values, um, we're going to enqueue that job. So this is how you actually enqueue a job, and then this will actually run separately. So what I actually also want to do here is we'll print out what the thread is from this endpoint to the console as well, just so we can see in our console of our ASP.NET app um, that this is running in a completely different thread that Hangfire will execute this in. And like I said earlier, is that this is all just happening in the same process of our ASP.NET Core app, but you could have separate processes on different VMs or where in Docker or wherever um, that are actually just handling background jobs. So these don't actually need to be in the same process. Um, but again, I'm just going to show you that they're actually running in the same process, but in different threads. So I'm going to run this, and I'll show you the output. All right, so we're going to run. And then we're going to take a look, once it's built and running, to our debug console. So I'll make this a little bit bigger, because that's where we're going to output to. So I'm going to jump over to Postman, and I'm just going to hit our API endpoint, just so we can invoke everything. All right, so I hit our API endpoint. So now if we jump back over to our debug console, we can see that the initial request came in on thread 22. And then we ran our background job job in thread 19. So that's it. We're pretty much have Hangfire running completely. So I'm going to do some more videos on Hangfire. This just going to kind of give a primer on how you can run back jo background jobs and how simple it is really to set up in ASP.NET Core. I'm going to show a lot more about Hangfire in some coming videos. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more .NET-related videos. Thanks.